Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. This is episode nine of the Option Podcast. Your hostess with the mostest. I'm Jason Debellius, and have we got a guest for you. You guys demanded it, and now he's on. And for me, I got to give the people, give the people what they want. Ref, Dave Carson, what's up, man? Afternoon, Jason. How are you today? All right, pretty good, man. So I um. Now, you know, I'm not much for homework, but I did a little bit of homework on you <laughs> and um, you you did some coaching. You're at uh, University of New Hampshire, right? Was that you, um, UNH? I, I am there right now. As a matter of fact, as we are conversing here, I'm uh, putting my crap together to get over to the gym uh, for practice. Nice. Oh, so you're doing uh, non-traditional right now for men's season, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, trust me. I know. I'm... Um, Long time CUNY guy. I was with Baruch College for four years, City College for two, um, uh, City Tech. Me and uh, Chi DiMaggio, if you remember Katricia, we built sure. that, we built that program off the ground. She's in Louisiana. God bless that woman's heart. She's one of the best human beings I ever met in my life. Um, yeah, we built that program off the ground, and and um, yeah, I was at John Jay for two years. The the women's no one year for the women's team, and yep, I like it. He's he's co-sign. <laughs> Good to you guys. Yeah. All right. So let's, um, I have a couple of topics and they're going to, there are a bunch of people who are just listening in now because this, <laughs> this thing is public. It's not like just friends. So, um, and because I wanted volleyball coaches and trainers to see this. In fact, I'm just going to um, tag them on my thing. All let's right. See. But let me, let me throw something out there yeah. first. My okay. little caveat. Please. Um, any conversation we have, it's going to yeah. be my philosophy. Of course. Um, obviously, I'm, I don't have a rule book in front of me. Um, I would prefer to talk more along those lines of philosophy, but I will entertain whatever comes our way. At the same time, this is not uh, – we don't hold this again any, against any organization. No. These are my philosophies, and we're going to have conversation. Of course. I mean, for me, conversation is where it starts because – um right now i mean uh my podcast is only this is the ninth episode and you know i've done like volleyball the tuesday after and i've talked to coaches i've talked to longtime players i talked to former players but as far as referees are concerned and um you're you're the first one that stepped up so <laughs> i mean i'm gonna ask some questions i mean i'm gonna ask some tough t t some questions <laughs> some i consider tough but i ain't, i'm not here to ambush you <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not worried you're, about that. You're the, one, just, you're the uh, one that picked up the phone and said yes. <laughs> I, I have no problem. I'm just covering my butt no, because uh, who knows who's listening, mm -hmm. and I don't want them to take it as this is steadfast no. uh, for ABP, NCAA, USAV, whatever, NFHS. This is we can discuss some rules, some mm -hmm. interpretations, um, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know me. You've watched mm -hmm. me. You've mm -hmm. known me for quite a while. Um, very philosophical when it comes to the world of officiating. Yes, so. sir. Yes, sir. So let me let me um, start with a question that's going to lead into. Um, uh, I won't call it a common denominator, but the brunt of the subject matter that people have been debating the last month and a half, certainly the last two years. Um, basically, I um, you know I'm with um, beach volleyball national events, right? So, mm -hmm. so sometimes I invite a coach on as a guest because I'm doing color. Com I, I, I coach in the morning, but I do color commentary and play by play for the semis and finals. So sure. I, I, I have a coach sit in with me and we just talk about volleyball or talk about, you know, the future of volleyball. Maybe we're, maybe we're just throwing softballs back at each other. But Jesse Webster, who's um, the head up of um, um, Hermosa Beach Volleyball Club, he's south of the pier, we're north. And he was okay. talking about hands we got into this conversation about hands and the the we went back and forth on like it's okay to take it in and out or uh, he's talking about spin and this and that so i'm gonna ask you a question that's the that i asked him um that i think is going to lead to this conversation the question was jesse when you look for a double do you look how it comes in or do you or do you look how it comes out it is my opinion, and I've and I've talked to many referees indoor and outdoor that, that the referees on a double is more about how it comes in. Please chime in anytime you want. Uh, you probably that's a higher percentage. Um, personally, I'm looking at both. I'm looking at in, and I'm looking at out. And let's go to spin. 
right off the bat. Spin is only an indicator. Right. That's all it is. Yep. Um, so many people, there's the urban myth that I know of for many years. Oh, no more than one and a quarter turns. You got to call it rotations, myth. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know of any rule book and I could be wrong. And cause there's regions that may write something up like that, that may have that in their rules. Um, but it's years ago when I played too, when you was younger, that's kind of the standard that we set for ourselves. Mm. Yep. We don't go down that path now. Um, mm. We want to see the actual contact. Mm. So for higher percentages, yes, when it comes into the hands, we want to see that contact. When it comes out, there's variables. Um, you're outdoors. Weather is a huge variable. Mm. So coming out could change. And it may not be the contact that made the change. Right. Makes yeah. sense? Absolute sense to me. Um, in a sense that, um, to me, a double is a double. <laughs> Correct. You know, did it, I mean, because if, the, the, here's where I think the whole uh, look for spin rule, um, as, as an exclusive standard, uh, is flawed. I have friends that can take it in, they can deep dish the ball, and it comes out, and it's immaculate. You can read Wilson off the back of it. Sure. And it's still a double. So, so I mean, a ball can come in one hand, out the other, but because someone has exercised and perfected the technique of what I call the, um, the FBI catch and release, or if you will, the Pizza Hut deep dish, um, um, because they spent so much time perfecting it, they are able to have the ball come out with no spin, and at the same time, it's still a double. Potentially correct. Yeah. One of the two is going to happen on every single touch. Right. Uh, yeah. But it happens very quickly. Obviously, if you take anything, put it on video, and you slow it down, we're going to find 99% of the time, probably, one of those two events happened. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And people are good at it. Uh, you take the old days, we allowed – probably a little bit more of that deep dish because of that myth of no spin. Yeah. Um, Whereas today Mm -hmm. we're moving towards a faster game, probably um, something that people are not going to want to hear, but more towards that European style where it's quick, it's fan friendly and Mm -hmm. um, it's entertaining. Yep. And it doesn't spin. I mean, a lot of those guys, I see them set the ball doesn't spin either. So, I mean, it's that they, I don't, I think they're, 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 I don't know if it's a new standard, but definitely a living testament that you don't have to dish the ball to get it to um, to not spin. <laughs> no, you don't. You take no, a look at these guys are jump the, uh... setting for Christ's sake. They're faking sure. hits and and setting shoots off a jumper. <laughs> yep, and you take a look at a lot of the indoor women's teams. You've mm-hmm. got some phenomenal setters out there that are just super quick release, and that ball doesn't even move. Mm-hmm. So, yep. yep, absolutely. Very, very well said. Hey, here comes our first brave soul, Dylan Huff. Um, on the topic of doubles, I, am I correct in saying that you may handset any ball, in parentheses, including serve-receive, as long as it's a clean contact? Difficult to do, yes, but it is legal. It is legal except for one exception, and Mr. Brown will uh, probably throw something in there about this. Mm-hmm. In the CBVA, it is actually written in there that you can't do that. Right. Oh, CBVA, meaning California, meaning one, one, one freaking state. Right. I understand that. But I'm just saying, as I answered somebody else earlier, different regions have different standards and kind of different rules for what they, what they want to do. But I yeah. think that's the only rule book or rule set that I know, um, and I can be wrong, that actually has it written in there that you cannot – do that on right. service seat. Okay, so you're right. If that's a regional rule and that's a no-no, um, I, I totally get that. Um, I have a book mm-hmm. actually in the house and I meant to just show it on camera, but since this is a podcast and um, a lot, you know, a podcast is on Spotify and iTunes just could be sound. It does, uh, I didn't really see the point. Um, <clears throat> I think I have a book called Volleyball Rules and Pictures. And it had what the rule was, you know, the code, the point this, and and they have a picture of saying that this is not this is not illegal it's only illegal to double it and it's only only illegal to carry it so and that was the the other um conversation and one of the controversial things we had about like hard driven balls which is which is going to be my personal question 
Um, what is considered a hard driven ball? Because I've been in some situations where a guy hit a ball and it wasn't his best shot, but it's still harder than like everybody else's. And now, and now you got a subjective call. Not everybody's like, oh, that's not hard driven or, or no, that's a double, you know, and, and I've seen people dig balls that aren't hard driven overhead, which we're just going to answer our own question, dig balls overhead that are not doubles. And it is my take on that where, like, if I'm refing a game, because um, I used to um, train refs for a New York Lawyers League, um, that um, for outdoor, you're not allowed to double hit a ball that's not hard driven. So I always ask the question, was the ball hard driven? And they're like, no. But the second question is, was that, in fact, a double hit? And if the answer to that is also no, then then it's fair. Again, we're, we're dealing with judgment. Mm -hmm. And each one of us that is going to officiate that particular situation is probably going to have a little bit different take on it. Obviously, the higher the level the officials are, the closer together we are or we should be on how we discern that and how we call that. Uh, but again, it's judgment. What mm -hmm. is hard driven? What isn't hard driven? We, as time goes on, whether it's indoors or outdoors, we have a propensity for understanding what each player does. Like if you're indoors, if I go through a rotation of players or maybe two rotations of players and I've got a five set match within those first two rotations of the first set, I'm pretty much knowing what each person's going to do with their hands. Yeah. Same thing outdoors. We have to be visual. We have to watch. We know what's, I know what Taylor's going to do every time he goes out there. I don't know what he's going to, how he's going to play. I know how um, Johnny Hyden's going to hit the ball. I know how he's going to dig the ball. Of course, that's over time. You get that, uh, that's that computer in the brain. You catalog all that stuff. It's a file. Yep. So now is that hard driven from him? Eh, it may be from him versus somebody else might not be hard driven. Again, each one of us is going to make a judgment on that. And it's probably going to be slightly different. Yeah, but we are in agreement that if the actual dig is not a double hit, it doesn't Unless matter it's if it's hard driven or not. complete separate contacts. Right, yeah. Yep. It has to be two completely separate contacts. Yeah. And we're going to give a little bit more leeway. Here's the philosophy that comes in. We're probably going to give a little bit more leeway on that. Mm -hmm. You know, part of us, our officiating, is we're part of the entertainment package. You didn't come there to watch me blow my whistle. <laughs> no. Right? And so well, most of the things I, I don't did. Either. I, mean, I, was, I, mean, I mean, come on. I'm a fan, <laughs> whatever. But no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And, and so, again, that's, that's a judgment. Every single time that ball is touched, we're making a judgment. This is one of the things that I ask officials when I'm training, um, specifically the indoor stuff. Um, and I, I know we're on outdoors here, but some of it pertains. Um, if I'm doing a five set match and there's no rallies, how many times do you think I have to judge the ball? Hmm. I don't know. I'll tell you 880 times. Yep. That's without rallies. All right. So I, I granted, I know it's a platform pass. Uh, I, I know it's a serve receive. I probably don't really have to judge it as intently as the set or the contact on the attack mm -hmm. or a block, but I still have to judge it. So we get into a match that's lots of rallies. I'm anywhere from 20, 1,200 to 1,500 times that I'm making judgments on. Let's go outdoors. Yeah. In a three-step match, I'm probably looking at 500, 500 times yeah. I'm making a, judge, a judgment. Mm -hmm. So each one of us has just a little bit of a difference in that judgment. But again, like I said earlier, the higher the level, the closer we are in that judgment. Yeah, Absolutely. Does that makes sense? Uh, absolutely, but I think what I'm trying to say is if the guy didn't commit a double hit and he, oh, and he sets the ball overhead, thank, yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. That's what I was getting on. If, it, yeah. if it's judged, hard, driven, and within the con – you know, our minds are computers. We're, we're thinking of this all the time. At least mm -hmm. I'm up there when I'm on the stand. Uh, I, I'm looking at that hard, driven, or that soft, driven. What's the value out of this? Can we keep the play and the rally going? Is it worthwhile? Do I need to get in – and interact? Do I need to make that, uh, that whistle? Uh, all of that stuff's going through my head in that split second. 
Nice. So, Ken Bassett, what's busy. up, man? Um, yeah, so, okay. Play on. Yeah. All right, so, all right, let's get to the subject of carries. When, when referees, when you're, uh, you particularly, I guess just you specifically because you're here on the show, um, are you looking for fluidity? Are you looking for discontinuation? Um, what, I'm looking for what, stoppage of the ball. Right. Okay. Plain and simple, stoppage of the ball. Yep. Okay, well, takes care of that. <laughs> shit, shit, moving right along. <laughs> My friend Ken, Ken Bassera, man, he messaged me just on time because he, he sometimes he does a little catch and throw. I call it the, like I said, the, the FBI set. <laughs> the catch Who, and release. That? My friend Ken Bassera, he's a New York uh-huh. guy. He's really good. And he's got calls multiple times for indoor uh, for doing the same set that the refs don't call outdoor. So it's just one of those things right. where I, I guess outdoor, they're just looking for a faster release or whatever, you know. And and I, I do think, I do suspect some referees when they see a middle blocker, as soon as the ball's dug, as soon as they see a middle blocker, like raise both hands to set, it's like they're almost inhaled. <laughs> That's a confirmed bias. It is. <laughs> you know, and it's a shame. It because as, as time has gone on, uh, we need to – um expand our horizons on that stuff as as it's 2019 2020 just because the middle touch the ball or the ds touch the ball or the libro touch the ball and they're not normally the ones that do it was it any different than the setter right. if it's not any different than the setter play on good yeah i like that eric anderson thank you for joining me we had a little conversation about this and i'm glad he's on he's on the show um, I don't know if you and Eric know each other. He does a, a lot of work with the, the U.S. team. Um, I right. don't know him, but I think I've answered a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. <I'll talk> to <laughs> him. Well, he's definitely going to have to rewind for the for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so were you a ref first or were you a coach first? Uh, it, it was kind of like a, a simultaneous thing. I've been a player since I was 10, 11 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, my little history – I grew up in Virginia Beach. I grew up in the surf, surf culture, uh, surfing all my life, uh, all the beach stuff. Started out playing volleyball down there when I was 11, 12 years old. And as uh, time went on, um, a couple um, higher ups indoors uh, said to me, uh, you have a very good knowledge of the game. Uh, you're usually captain of your team. You're a pretty damn good setter. Let's see if we can move you towards the officiating side. And, of course, you're a little apprehensive. Like, no, I just want to play. Yeah, um, why be a judge when you could be a player? Yeah. Right. Uh, but as time went on, I found that, uh, look, I'm 6'1". I, I, I'm, uh, I, I don't have a 50-inch vertical. I'm not going to go D1. I'm not going to go pro. So yeah. how can I stay <laughs> in the game of volleyball? What's your wingspan? <laughs> <laughs> What's my wing? Yeah, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm six one. In, in, I'm six one too. But my my wingspan six eight. But sorry, go ahead. So how can I stay in the game of volleyball yeah. and be effective and still have the passion and enjoy what I'm doing? Well, I, I guess I found my niche in the officiating. There's probably some of us out there, or some of those out there that will probably say, I don't think so. But you know, um, I, yeah. I, I I believe I do pretty good at my job. I believe you do pretty good at your job in uh, two folds. One, um, from some of my peers, um, people, um, you know, I moved here. I've become familiar with some people. There's, you know, Baranek, who's like a good friend of mine. Um, sure. Dross, me and, me and him talk. We're cool. For, you know, for Noi, we're chill. So there's a, a, a group of people up and down. Me and Miles at that are really chill. Uh, there's a collective consensus on some of the refs that, one, if they don't talk about you, you're doing your job. <laughs> if, you're, if you're if you're talked about, if someone mentions your name, <laughs> it's probably you know. Um, but on a personal level, they've mentioned you personally. They like you. You get you you you, you know. You get along. You create the atmosphere where I think you are about you about to say this, and I think I might be beating you to the punch that if they don't know you're up there, you're doing your job. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. That that's part of it. And and as I said a little bit earlier, we're part of the entertainment. Yep. So how do I fit myself in there? When do I interact? When do I not? Right. Um, getting along, uh, it's so much easier to do things with honey versus vinegar. Um, mm. So, yeah, that, that's all part of the officiating also. How do I gain that respect? Um, how do I give that respect? Um, what's the rapport like? All of that fits into that whole little genre of officiating. It's not just a matter of going out there and 
and uh, blowing a whistle. There's some very good officials out there that can blow a whistle, but people don't like them. Um, yeah. they're just, uh, they're, they're so black and white and boom, this is how it is. And that all goes into this conversation that we're throwing out there about the philosophy of it. Um, again, you don't come to see me blow my whistle, neither do the fans. So if I can facilitate in a match and there's some gray area there and it's going to be better for the match, it's going to be better for the game and what's going on out there. And for you people who are sitting in the stand, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, yep. And Kenny, yeah, he already answered uh, Dylan's question. Um, first contact on serve receive or, 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 or clean contact on balls that are not hard driven. Um, CBVA is the, the, the one state that we know that has explicitly in their, their rules and content that serve receive cannot be on an overhead pass. Um, right. So, no, but as a, really but as a sure. but Kenny, as a general rule, it's ne it's never never has. Even when indoor, even when indoor, when first contact was legal, they made first contact legal in two thousand one. Even then, my my rules and pictures book goes back to nineteen ninety two, and it says receive and serve overhead wasn't illegal. So, right, you know, it's right. just something a bunch of people get together and decide. You know, like you said, it's an entertainment thing, and sometimes there people are arbitrary in their rules. You know, they. Um, back in the day, and we go back a long time. Back, the refs got together and decided if your hands are up and you, you pass it, they don't care. They gotta, you know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him. Okay, all right, it's illegal. Tell me what the call is. <laughs> it's, it's a double. I'm like bullshit. You know. Uh, um, so carry. Okay, you made that up, and I get that. So um, yeah. So listen, it's not uncommon for volleyball, particularly in certain regions, to to be to be anal about certain things. I mean, you got Donald Son that actually made the scoring freeze. Uh, illegal right now, right? The AVP is the only franchise that, that that's, that's doing that right now. So, so that, there are there are things for its entertainment value that we as players, um, we we I I think I'm not going to use the word we got to eat it because it's not like this big pill we got to eat. We just play at the end of the day, uh, the higher the level you play, the more the game just looks the same. Um, but it's one of those things where as long as it's not completely skewing the, 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 our, our old school and new school philosophy of bumps at spike, where I think we're okay with that, you know? Uh, um, and I think along those lines, Jason, what you yeah. have is, uh, it, like you have on some of the posts and some of the forums is, uh, it's essentially an old school versus a new school philosophy that always goes on. Yep. Um, I, was, I was just going to say that. Yep. Nothing wrong with either one of them. Yeah. Uh, and nothing wrong with people moving between the two of them and playing between the two of them. Uh, but there's always going to be a percentage that prefers it one way or the other. Yeah, man. Um, yep. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's and, and, that's, and that's the problem I have. Okay, look, I'm, I'm 49, whatever. I'm 50 next year. I know. <laughs> Don't sweat what you hear. Act like you know. Um, so – Listen, but I so I'm from that school where I've seen a handful of players who spent as much as it spent a half a decade learning how to catch a ball and throw it um, so it doesn't spin. So there comes this sense of resentment um, that that you know anyone that doesn't do it their way because they work so hard at it. All oh, oh that's a double. Oh it's chowder. Oh that's a that's a chuck. It's dude. That's not how the rules work. <laughs> That's not how the rules work, you know, and some, uh, which is my next question. Something in my experience, I've noticed a lot of referees that where I notice the faster the release of the set, the more forgivable the spin is. And the more in and out you take the set, the more immaculate the set has to be. Have you seen some referees call it that way? Uh, I would say that that's a pretty correct statement. Yeah. Um, it does happen that way. Hmm. Um you know, your fast release is definitely uh, an area where we're a little more forgiving, and that's potentially where we get some of the heckling out of the crowds a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, the, the guys the yeah, the guys who learn how to catch and throw it and think that's how, you know, and the, the little bubble they exist, and y'all know what I'm talking about, you know, that that's how it's supposed to be. Come on. All right. You, you get uh, – <laughs> let's go back to, you know, Hawaii last year where we had king of the court, and we brought in uh, mm. um, a, a few of the European and uh, – uh, World League uh, players. Yeah. Uh, totally different style. Yep. Totally different. Hmm. Um, our style also is more of a up and down. And as you said earlier, uh, we're starting to get jump sets out of that. We're starting to get shoots. We're starting to get shoots to the outside. Uh, much, much quicker uh, brand of ball for beach. It's very interesting. So, yeah, there's a little more forgivingness when it comes to 
moving that ball around quick. Yep. And that's why I think just, I don't know, everyone got together and said, hey, a double's a double, <laughs> you know? Um, we let's... still got to look at the contact, even when they do that. Yeah. Um, again, it's a little bit more leeway. You may have a little bit more spin on the ball here and there. And you know as well as I do, when we're training and, and coaching, sometimes I, I can take a ball and spin it forward, and that's not a double on that, and it can spin like a top. Right. Yep. So uh, is, is it frowned upon? Do purists out on the beach go, oh, my God, you guys suck? Sure they do, <laughs> but um, we have to live with that. Yeah, we do. We're, well, we all do. Everyone makes mistakes. Speaking of which, um, uh, let's, I'm selfishly going to jump to the indoor scene a little bit. Uh, replay system, good or bad for the sport? Love it. Me too. Me too. And Especially I, the I things that are it, challengeable. So. Absolutely. What, what's wrong with that? The, uh, we're still in the growing pains. I believe this is our fourth year with it. Mm -hmm. um, and actually this year we're also uh, entertaining headsets, which is the FIB, FIBB has done for quite a while. Um, we have not got into a uh, criterion parameters on the headset yet in a lot of our conferences, but we're working towards those goals. Mm -hmm. uh, but CRS, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, our only issue with CRS right now is we don't have the cameras that FIVB does. Um, so we're working at a deficit as far as frames go. Um, so when you uh, zoom in and stuff, it pixelates a lot. We mm -hmm. need to more money needs to come into that to uh, make our camera systems uh, much more viable. And yeah. it will as time goes on, but I absolutely love it. Do you guys collectively feel a little bit of pressure to actually make a call on, on balls that maybe just everybody missed? You know, I'll give you an example. There's a ball, maybe you're, you're ref in the qualifier. You don't have the line judges, right? You have a whole team going, saying out. You have a whole team saying, going in. Uh, calling and you actually missed it because maybe the same time the ball hit the ground like a body went across it because this is this is and this is the referees thing that, that that referee a lot of people don't know but anyone who's been in a high chair it's like you're trying to watch the ball on the ground and then someone's body you know who's trying to move out of the way <laughs> you know like the player who's escorting it out of bounds they block you the same time it touches the ground sure. you know um I guess for beach it's easier because at the end of the day you could use you could use the mark the ball mark, but is, is it, for indoor, is it one of those things where you feel or they feel pressured to actually make a call one way or another? Or is it one of those things where I'm like, hey, it's a replay. I didn't see the ball. I got that whole team saying out. I got that whole team saying in. I guess that probably depends on the official. Mm -hmm. um, again, and I, I know that may sound like a cop out and I hate to say that, well, but being honest, levels, but, mm -hmm. levels of officials will do different things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take myself personally. If I didn't see it, why am I going to interject myself in there and make a call? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to probably go down that path that's going to facilitate the match of the game. Mm -hmm. If it needs to be a replay because I didn't see it, then it's up to me to explain it and, and take it. I'm not going to do something that is going to cause the integrity of that situation to be compromised. Yeah, I agree. Yep, 100%. Um, I you know, would... this is great for that though, even with line judges. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. So, so for me, um, for indoor, I would like, like, I remember listening to Barnett and Sunderland, and they were talking about, uh, about how they have a problem with like, they the 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 way the game is being called or the way the game is being um, um played. It's extremely slow. I mean, they were they were worried about like replays actually just making the games last longer and this and that. And for me, I, I did a little research on myself. I think the thing that makes the games last longer are these ridiculously long uh, periods of time between the when the ball hits the ground and when the whistle's blown for a serve. I did my own study, a very small sample size. I did two, three matches, uh, 1992, basically just the Olympics. And I did... Um, Long Beach State, uh, their last two finals. One was against UCLA and one was against, uh, who was it this year, Hawaii? Um, and the average amount of time for the, the games in 1992, when the ball hit the ground and when the referee blew the whistle for serve, was 7.2 seconds. And the average right. time now is 22.4 seconds. 
So, uh, for, in my opinion, I'm like, you want to see the game sped up a little bit more? How about we just get that guy the ball? How about the subs? Be- be- before in the past, the coach had to call us up. Now, these guys just go to the thing, they write it up, boom, they're in and out. You know, so so it's one of those things. I'm like, you want to speed up the game? Don't 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 change first hit into a double because it's exciting and because Al Skates, who only, at the, in my opinion, at the time only had two marbles rolling around in his head when he said, oh, it's a great rule. Oh, it's a great rule change. And everybody's like, well, Al said it. Okay, so it must be good. You know, so I think the game is fine. I just think there has to be a flow and tempo. Um, I'll stop. <laughs> Thoughts? Interesting. I, I that's, a, that's a stat that I wasn't uh, aware of. I didn't think it had slowed down that much. I did a study, and my sample size, I'm just going to admit, because I hate people. I despise people that say, studies show this, studies show that, and they don't actually read the study. So I'm just going to admit up front, I'm going to disclose that I only did it for two matches, the Olympics in 92, and I did the finals for uh, both finals for Long Beach State versus Hawaii and um, – uh, right. um, UCLA. Because I feel right now our game is pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised at your stats on that. Yeah. Um, and especially uh, when someone's ready to start, they step across that line. Personally, my whistle goes. Uh-huh. We've got eight seconds. Um, typically, when I am uh, training officials and I'm uh, telling them how to look for things and scan and so on and so forth, I'm giving them the thought process that they've got eight to 10 seconds between plays. No more. I like Move it. it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a little surprised at, uh, to hear that. I think, again, small sample size. I watched um, Wisconsin against Penn State last night. That match went pretty quick. That was four sets. Right. That was the four sets. That was four sets that went inside um, an hour and 40 minutes. So, you know, right. what, do I, what do I know? <laughs> you know, and Most- um, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Obviously, when we're on the phone like this, we're probably going to interrupt each other occasionally. And I'm also in my car driving, so hopefully I don't lose you. Okay. Um, most of those teams, most of those girls, and especially at the higher level, they're ready before we are. Right. They want to move. Man, they're just, yeah. They're like, come on, let's get let's get going here. I, I got homework to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, sure. Ken Bassarath plugs in his question. What is – what is the standard on net touches? He says, as a blocker, I always get a close view of people touching the net, however micro, and sometimes the ball moves the net into the people's skin. Is a touch a touch, or are there guidelines? If the ball pushes the net into a person, hopefully we're good enough not to make that call. Right. I don't, and I'm not even um, sure if Ken's asking, are you, is that a net violation or is that a touch, a touch block? A net violation, we already know. If the ball hits, if the ball hits a net and then it hits a blocker, that doesn't count. But so I guess he's talking about touch. Talking about touch. Uh, he, he has to be because, right, the rule is if, uh, on the other, if the ball, if, if I hit a ball into the net and the net hits you, that's not, that's not, that's not a net violation. Correct. Right. So he, he has to be talking about the touch. Um, and then I'm a little lost on what he is asking. Let me, as far as- let's just repeat it. See, so we could piece it together. Okay? okay. Um, I always get a close view of people touching the net, however micro it may be. And sometimes the ball moves the net into people's skin is a touch, a touch, or are there guidelines? A touch is a touch. If someone is touching the ball that yeah. has been hit into them yep. on a blocking situation, yep. a touch is a touch. Touch is a touch. But the ball, we have to see that ball contact the the player. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it can be below the plane of the net. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we're going to have that net pushed into the player. Um, that's not going to be any type of violation except the fact that it probably drops on their side and you're either going to have fall down or four contacts because it didn't clear. Right. But if it touches somebody at the top of the net, we have to be aware of that. We have to be looking at that, that just like we do on double contacts. We have to see the contact. Yep. Got it, Kenny. The so net. we yep. are looking at that. Um, I'm going to give you my little personal story that just happened this year. Um, Austin. And I don't know if you saw it or if you were there um, Sunday, Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. I made a net call on Ricardo uh, that the ball was hit to his uh, I'm at R2. I'm looking up. The ball was hit to the left side of him. 
Mm -hmm. As he penetrated and blocked, the ball hit the top of the net on the left side, caused the net to move. I swear today, as I looked over, his right arm, as he pressed, touched the top of the net. Right. Well, lo and behold, they show it up on the camera, uh -huh. up on the screen six times in a row in slow motion. <laughs> and he got to eat it. Don't okay. you just love that sometimes? Yeah. I got to eat it. He missed it by probably three-eighths of an inch. Yeah. It's like one of the, it's like an NBA game when they're looking for a foul. All of a sudden you see people look up. And it's, and, and, oh, sure. and it's so weird because with the way the camera zooms in on them, it looks like they're looking for, looking to God for an answer, but they're just looking at the replay camera. So I think, I I think volleyball, we're going, we're going that direction too. Yeah, I made a mistake. Simple mm -hmm. as that. Yep. Um, and you know, as well as I do, the, the, the eyes, human eyes are the worst in the mammal kingdom anyway. And we do pretty damn good with them. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, Ricardo's a good guy. Uh, we talked about it afterwards, and like he said, you know, the mistakes that we made, that one call isn't going to hurt us. No. But as an official, I don't like making that call. So we really have to see that contact. And if I don't see that, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt so no. that we can move on and continue play. No, I totally, totally get that, man. It, that's that's um that's pretty cool. So for um. Indoor and outdoor, I, I want to cover one last thing um, ca uh, about, the, about the carry. Um, is there a myth about how low the ball can be taken? Absolutely not. Oh, is there a myth? Oh, there's probably a myth. In reality, I don't care where that ball comes from. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't go further down than where the point of contact goes, right? Is that, is that fair? As long as you have not carried or thrown the ball, which right. is its verbiage. Yeah. I, I actually I actually heard a ref say, like, he's seen people take it low, but as long as where they take it, they don't drop it lower and then back up. Like, well, he starts low. that's going to be, yeah. that's going to be that uh, catch and release that we talk about, that the old days of um, where the ball didn't move because people were good enough to be able to grab the ball, bring it down, and put it back up. Yeah. That's going to be called every single time. Yeah. especially outdoors. That has been a POE for us, which is a point of emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, do not let the ball come back down and go back up. Agreed. Yep, I like that. But where you take it from shouldn't matter. <laughs> Kenny's like, so can I set from my belt? <laughs> Kenny's like, so can I set from my belt? I'm like, yeah, as long as you're on your back. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, again, facilitating moving the flow and entertaining the crowd. Absolutely. I like that. All right. Well, man, listen, we were only supposed to be on for 30 minutes. And I, you know, I mean, usually my, I, like my, and the, I like my podcast to last for an hour, but I'll definitely fill it later. Um, Kenny's like inverted, <laughs> inverted sets. <laughs> I've seen inverted oh, yeah. sets oh, on the international in scene. There. Oh yeah, you're gonna throw words in there. And, uh, uh, I've seen, get into these, but I've seen the inverted things. set on the international scene. Someone just take sure. it down there and just whoom. <laughs> Dougie Fresh yeah, just talking, joined. You mm -hmm. know, we talk international. You're talking. You're talking top two percent of the people in the world that can play at that level. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And you're you're also probably talking. Uh, do we uh, make that call and start World War Three, or do we uh, uh, facilitate play and let it go? Absolutely. Um, Eric Anderson just said, nice job, gentlemen. And Dougie Fresh, you know, who's spent a lot of time with Ricardo this year, said, what's up, brother? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dougie. you want to see a good podcast? Him, me, and Jeff Samuels, episode six, no, seven. He, I go to around 40 minutes into it, and we, it is just hilarious. Doug, if you're listening, go back to like 41 minutes when we started talking about John Jones. It was hilarious i i listen to it all the time <laughs> it's ridiculous so um so listen hey thank thank you so much for my time to, uh for your time and well our time my time's valuable but yours is exceptionally valuable you're on your way to work um very very um very very well said on some of these tough tough questions because I'm, I'm i tried to cover as much as i could and we covered we're going on 40 minutes and I think 30 of it was about hands. So we, we, that, that it's was a hot, always going to be a topic. Yeah. Well, it's, it, well, it was a hot topic the last month and a half. It's always a hot topic, like you said, but it was, it was boiling over the last few weeks. And it was one of those things where I'm like, Hey, I'm going to, I got, 
I want to get, we should get a ref on my show. And I'm like, Hey, I know a guy, <laughs> I know a guy. So um, you know, it's, it's not going to change Jason, uh, whether it's the past couple of months, whether it's over the winter, whether it's next spring, next summer, that that's just a subject yeah. that is always going to be conversed. Yes, sir. And that's okay. Yes, sir. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, hell no. Um, I love it. Uh, I enjoy putting myself in the position as an official to make those calls. Yep. Um, again, I'd like to think that I do a good job at it. And you do. I love I love being up there. I love being on the stand. I love being in R2. I love being in that world. I love dealing with those people. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. I mean, what are Jeez. Besides surfing for a career, what the hell else? No, there's, there, I mean, this, this dude, this is why I moved here. This is why I moved here. I moved here to coach and do some color commentary. Um, tough sledding, you know, because they made me pay dues all over again. But here, I, but here I am, sure. just the same, doing doing my thing and and building my brand as at the same time as putting our love and our heart and and, and our soul and just blood, sweat, and tears into the sport that we love and respect. Um, they, I would, uh, if you don't mind, I would like to give a shout out please. to Donald Son. Yeah. I really think. Uh, that he has done a very good job mm -hmm. uh, in bringing this back to the forefront and trying to do the best he can with this brand. Yep. Um, and I appreciate the fact that he's given us employment, whether mm -hmm. it's a player, whether it's an official, and that he's uh, done the best he can to entertain the fans. Um, you know as well as I do over the years, and I've been involved with uh, the AVP since the, since the mid to late 80s um it's gone up and down yeah. and it's nice to have it back mm -hmm. whether we like it some people don't some people do mm -hmm. whether you like the new ball whether you like the old ball and, i don't care and that's changed it's too like listen 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 when that the whole scoring freeze came out there are a bunch of people that didn't like that i just talked to two or three years later and they do like it so it's one it's one of those things where some people are just they're they're um stubborn to change I certainly am. Um, and though I have not been one of Donald Sun's biggest critics, um, I, have, I wouldn't say I was highly critical of, of some of the moves he made. I've been somewhat critical, um, which I think he has no problem with me or, 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 or Jeff Conover. As Jeff Conover said, as long as the criticism's fair. Me and God, you know, it's not like, oh, anybody that says anything bad to me, oh, you're banned, you're banned, you're banned. You know, that's, that's not how it works. You know, I mean, that's not how it should work, you know, because, uh, um, you know, I don't, I don't think he's a big baby like that. You know, I think. You know, if, you know, because I think for every one thing I've said, critic, uh, in a, in a, in a, not a negative inference, but in a critical inference, I said four things that were, that were, that I liked. So um, I really love that he took a chance. I look at, I love that he had a vision that not necessarily everybody saw. Right. They didn't. They, they, they're like, what the hell is this guy doing? What are you doing? He had a vision that that a lot of people see now and some people still disagree. But a lot of people are like, hey, we're on board with this. This is exciting. This is good for the sport. man. we got, you know, whatever. So um, like you uh, in that respect, I co-sign, you know, to quote the great, the great Barack Obama. Have we made mistakes? Of course we have. This is what happens when you try things. So absolutely. Um, so and and for and and with that being said, I like that same courtesy and that same respect to be putting up to what P1440 is doing too. You know, their first year, there are a lot of people that had nothing but bad things to say. And I'm like, these people have made, they've only been in this for like a whole physical year, you know? And there've been some mistakes that we are familiar with because we've seen de a decade ago that it feels like it's the same thing. Let them make their mistakes. Let them make their mistakes. Let them self-correct. Let the, let 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 them do. Because I'll tell you what: the people that run that, and the people that founded that, they they they're not in this to win. They're not losers. They're, they're at the end of the day, this is going to be fixed, and they're going to win. So I I in turn would like to say all to take all this praise, and and you know season's over now. P fourteen forty's got the developmental thing going on. I'd like I'd like for people to cut them a little freaking slack too, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. So, um, uh, the whole point is to grow the sport. So anybody that puts themselves in that position, as you just said, to uh, to have a vision and to try, God bless them. Yep. God simple bless them. that. The other shout out I'd like to give Please. is to his wife Stephanie yep. for the simple fact that she's letting him do it. <laughs> I like that. it. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, I, I I met the guy for the first time face to face in Hermosa Beach, and you know, seems like he, him, and Jeff, when they're standing together, everyone's like twenty feet away, and I'm like. 
not me. You know, I just roll up on someone and I'm saying, hey, love what you're doing here. Today's my, and by the way, today's my birthday. You know, oh, by the way, I coached the team in a qualifier. And by the way, they made the main draw, you know. So, so it was one of those things where it's not like I was coaching Rafa or doing like stats, you know, like analytics for Rafa, who was already in the draw. So it was, it was a great weekend for everybody. It was a weekend where I got, I got a team and I punched my own ticket and I, I wasn't gifted the job, you know. So, um, right. No, um, it's, it's, it's uh, all, it's all good. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, headed, uh, I'm almost at the, uh, at the school, but you know, did you, dri- did you drive around time. the block for me? Did you drive around the block for me? Did you do that for us? <laughs> huh? Come on. Did you do that for us? <laughs> <That's the same. laughs> uh, but, uh, I say I'd like to be involved with this a little more often. Let's throw some things out there. Yeah. Uh, get some people if they want to uh, ask some more questions. Yeah. Um, but when uh, you come, show absolutely. up. Hey, if you when you come to California, like well, we tried like, that a couple of times, we yeah. just hadn't been able to put it together. I would love to do that. Well, it'll Obviously, happen. That's got to well, wait this, till next year. Well, right this, now if we uh, do this, we don't yeah. have to wait till next year. No, we don't. And this podcast ain't going nowhere. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things that one of the, one of my mission statements when I started this, when I stopped on volleyball the Tuesday after and I started the podcast and I went from just being a media guy to just being um, a, a volleyball personality because that's what I am. I'm not, a, I'm really not a media guy. I just, I did media because when I moved here to do color commentary, it was just the way to introduce myself to media people um, and to people who coach and the people who play. So, um, and that's my end game is at some point I want, I want to do, you know what what chris marlowe's doing i want to do what 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 kevin barnett's doing at least for the indoor scene i'm not a big fan of of the the the, the beach color commentary uh, um which is a whole nother podcast um yeah so my end game is that and that's that's what i that's why i did media last year but now this is a podcast and now we're you know now now we could just sit here and we can we could just get into some some good stuff and and this came from a, a very honest place and it and it was engaging and everyone's interested in the subject matter so with that being said with that being said god bless you um good luck with your ncaa season and 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 what's what's what it's becoming and if you have a live stream like um you know cuny has their own their own um they actually have their own channel on tv on cable but if you have like a link that has a live stream for some of your matches send me the link okay Sure, we'll do that. All right. All right. Hey, that's it for David Carson, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the man who stepped up to the plate. Had some bad controversial calls in your match. Had a ref that's a blight up there. He should be banned. He should be suspended for life. Have a ref that was pretty sharp. Have a ref that you don't know was up there, which means he, which means he did his job. Of all the people that... Um, you know, have other things to do when they're not refereeing and all the people, you know, who, um, you know, they, 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 you know, talking to me, um, uh, me or media is not their thing. Um, I like that of all the people, of all of those people, this is the guy that stepped up on front street and he knew I was going to ask some softball questions, but he also knew I was going to ask some tough questions. So, um, so, uh, big up to Dave Carson for stepping up to the plate, which is only supposed to be a half hour podcast. And, and of course, here we are, you know what a half hour means to me. Um, Kenny, oh, wait, sorry, uh, Kenny waiting to, to find out if I can serve receive with my hands. That question has been answered. The answer is absolutely. Yes, you can. As long as it's not a double or carry, uh, regionally CBVA, California beach volleyball association, to my knowledge, uh, is one of the states that does not allow it. They they circumvented uh, the rules and threw in uh, their own guidelines. Just don't do it. And, and I think the rationalization behind that is because it's so diff. Like if you remember Kenny um, Kenny's first year or second year of NCAA is uh, when he played when he played NCAA. Ken Basser, I think you guys don't know, middle blocker play with Hustle and Flow, you know, U.S. national champs. Actually, Hustle and Flow, I think Taylor Crabb was on that team, Taylor Sander, Frankie, uh, Luis Mendez. So um, so what were we talking about? So Kenny was started his first year at NCAA, playing NCAA volleyball. It was the rule change indoor where double was allowed to be a, a um, first hit. So the problem I had was that I think a lot of referees were taking balls that I thought were carries and saying, no, that's a double hit. And I'm like, no, dude, that's a throw. You know, we're going against Ramapo or whatever. And the guy jumps in the air and takes both hands, moves both hands towards his left shoulders, and then just 
throws the ball to the target or the attempted target. And to some people, oh, that's a double contact. It didn't win and win at the other. But I'm like, no, but that's, no, that's a, that's a carry. That's a chuck, you know? And, and it's one of those things, Kenny, if your question is, um, can something be a carry and a double hit at the same time? The answer is a yes. Yes, it can be. <laughs> um, but I think CBVA's rationalization is that it's so tough. It's tough enough for them making subjective calls about second hit, you know? And third hit, don't even get me started about squaring your shoulders and like people moving and doing this and this and all my shoulders square. So it's they, to them, and I'm not calling them lazy or anything, but it's tough enough moderating second hit. They, they don't, they, they feel like first, maybe they feel like first contact is an area they don't want to go. But um, as, like if you have a, a world leader or, or, or like, I'm not going to say open level player, I'll just say a high level open level player that are that's playing like playing down or playing a force tournament or whatever, some of those serves move slow enough, they're going to take it with their hands and it's going to be clean. It's legal. It's not illegal. Um, but it is illegal in CBVA and CBVA tournaments. Um, um, I don't know if, you know, they're, they're the guidelines are the, 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 they're, they're a high standard in California, but I don't know if everybody goes by that because me with beach volleyball national events, I, um, we have tournaments where, you know, because, and they're 14s and 15s and some 12 year olds, we have tournaments where we kind of let that stuff go because we want people to use their hands more. So um, all the criticism I had where people are just bent on the rules to make it convenient for them, I'm contradicting my, myself because beach volleyball national events, we have no hands calls tournaments, you know? Um, and our rationalization is we want, you know, little girls and um, little boys, 12 year olds, 13 year olds to use their hands more. Um, I'm not going to be lazy and say studies show that people are, are better, more effective offensively with, with a hand set than a bump set. Um, and I could certainly come back at you guys from a different angle on that, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Eric Anderson says absolutely right about your lift interpretation. That's why some of the talk is getting rid of the double contact and only call the lift ball. Um, yeah, I know that's, that's been a conversation for, um, I think four years after the rule change, which is 2001 or two, I, maybe 2000, but I think it wasn't a physical year. I think it was a calendar year. So it was a calendar year is 2001. Uh, but 2005, they were just like, oh, if it's, if it's, if it's an athletic move, it's okay. And I'm like, oh my God, did you just say that now? So now. In addition to determining if something's a devil or not, you have to determine if, if something, someone made an athletic move. I mean, you're playing sixes. Everything you're doing at court's an athletic move. This, this, huh? An athletic move. So, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, next thing you know, they're gonna be like, oh, he doubled it, but he didn't mean to, so it doesn't count. So I'm just like, so now we're gonna read someone's mind if they meant to do it or not. So this is just insane, you know. Um, to me. A double's a double. If it goes in one hand and out the other, that's a double. We're not talking about, I don't want to hear nothing about spin. I want to maybe hear some about spin because some side spin might suggest that it goes in your left and out your right or, or vice versa. I get that, you know, but don't, we, we ain't trying to talk about spin when a guy actually hit the ball with both hands at the same time. I'm not, a double is a double, you know? And like a lot of refs agree, um, for the most part, you, you're not doing your guidelines on how a ball comes out to call a double. Um, you look at any international ref or whatever, they're looking at how the ball comes in. If you ever watch an FIVB game on the beach, they're calling a double as soon as it leaves the person's hands. So that means they're not looking to see how it comes out because that means they have to wait for it to come out watch spin, and then call the ball. No, they're, they're seeing how it comes in and almost the, the whistle's almost immediate. Um, Ken Bassareth is cool. It's not like I can do it every time, but if someone floats the ball right to my face, most likely I can use both hands. Thanks for the info. And Kenny, thanks for, for chiming in on the show, man. Kenny, a long time brother from another mother, um, known Kenny for um, 19 years. Uh, I told you he played NCAA, and I know he played NCAA because I was the head coach of that program, a program that we, that um, we as players and coaches and, and athletic directors built from the ground up. They didn't even have a club team. Um, in fact, our first match of the season, we registered someone for classes like 10 minutes before the first match, you know, and um, we were eligible for postseason play because I think either men's volleyball or that conference was get, uh, grandfathered in. So 
it's not like they, you know, it was exciting because you did it for something. You had an end game. You had, you know, you had a chance to at least go to um, the conference tournament. And the CUNY conference, you know, at, at the time, and many times it's considered the weakest conference in, in the United States, um, has these boom periods where they're just, we had this, this, immigration population of Dominicans from playing for Lehman, you know, the Russians from Brighton Beach, some of the Polish guys out of Brooklyn, they're, they're going to play for Baruch. Uh, some of the Long, Long Island and upstate New York has a, has a huge, huge talent pool, Sacum High School, you know, ball, ball, um, ball uh, school out of Baldwin, I can't remember. So, um, so I thank Kenny for, for chiming in on the show, Eric Anderson. Uh, I, I'd love for you to just DM, um, uh, message me your phone number. We, uh, I, I think whenever you're in California, we just got to have dinner and conversate because you definitely sound, sound like someone that you and I um, see eye to eye and can, can just share a few jokes with and have a drink with, all right? Um, so I thank those guys for coming on the show. Thanks to, to referee Dave Carson. And thank all of you, all right, the volleyball faithful, coaches, fans, uh, friends, diehard players, longtime players, players that have played longer than me, players that have played longer than I've lived. Uh, imagine how many times the rules have changed <laughs> then, huh? Um, yeah, for all of you at home, for all of you at your at Starbucks on your tablet, listening to this, for all of you on your iPhones and your Androids, I'm Jason DeBellis. Oh, he says David Jack. Wow, is that like a, that's like a Creole flashback, dude? Oh, man. <laughs> Dang, I had this nice flow when I was going to finish. I'm going to try it again. Um, love you guys. This is episode nine. I'm out.